The Denver real estate market remains stable despite unstable interest rates. What should we be on the lookout for as we head into the busiest time for selling homes during the year? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ryan Herrer, Denver Real Estate Advisor. And as a local realtor, we use data to break down what you need to know to make informed decisions in the housing market, whether you are buying or selling this year or in the near future. Before we jump into this video and dive into the latest numbers from February this early March, please like and subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments what you want to see next. So we're going to break up this video into three different parts. First, we're going to talk about the latest data from the Denver Metro Association of Realtors and talk a little bit about what it means. Then we'll dive into what this means specifically for home buyers, what it means for home sellers, and then give you my bottom line. So first, the numbers and what they mean. The Denver Metro Association of Realtors just put out the latest statistics looking at what happened in the month of February after a very slow quarter four and January of 2023. And in the month of February, we saw a lot more buyers come back to the housing market, and we'll talk about why that is in just a bit. But the result of that was more buyers in the market was a, a slightly more competition for homes that were on the market and a slight increase in the median close price of homes for the first time in several months. So let's start by talking about median close price. Like I mentioned, it is up slightly since January. It's the first time that Prices have actually risen since, oh, I don't know, May or June of 2022. Of course, as interest rates started to rise, prices started to dip. The wild market of 2021 and 2022 came to an end in quarter three of 2022, and prices bottomed out in January of 23, uh, as I'm recording this video in early March. So prices are up slightly despite a 12% drop from the median, uh, top median close price in May. May, April of 2022. So certainly we did lose some value, but overall the Denver housing market is stable. There's not a free fall of prices. And hopefully this is a good sign right here, a slight uptick in home values, both in the detached uh, and attached markets, that's condos and townhomes. The median detached price is up just under 1% and the attached units in February were up just over 1%. Okay, let's talk inventory, which is going to be a huge piece of understanding the 2023 housing market in Denver, Colorado. There were many more homes to choose from in February compared to January. That's not unusual coming out of the end of a year. Seasonality does have an effect in the Colorado real estate market. The end of the year just is simply slower. It's colder. People are celebrating the holidays. They just don't want to be moving in November and December. Um, people start to get their stuff together in January and transacting again in February. And we saw that here, despite hyper, uh, despite extremely high interest rates that were starting to tick down in February. And when they started to tick down just a bit, there were more buyers in the market transacting. Of note, there were a whopping 25% increase in the number of closings indicated here in Maroon, but active listings, they're still extremely low. In fact, active inventory in our market these last couple of months have been at their lowest points since 2014. There's not a whole lot to choose from, and that'll be an important part of our next chapters in this video of understanding what this all means for buyers and sellers. So in the last couple of years, interest rates were so low that home buyers were willing to overpay and make repairs on homes themselves just to get into a home that allowed them to have an extremely low mortgage payment. Today, while there's still plenty of uncertainty in the macro economy, the housing market in Denver appears to be stable. And we saw evidence of that in the last couple of months with home buyers returning to the market once interest rates dipped below 7%, which is extremely high compared to the last decade. A lot of those buyers are people who just didn't want to participate in the chaos of 2021 and 2022. We're sitting on the sidelines and are now jumping back in and getting some really great deals because there's less competition, but they're also taking their time to find the best house possible. They're not just snatching up anything they can actually purchase as in the last couple of years. They are taking their time finding the one. And we see that reflected in terms of our average days on market. Over the last couple of years, a home would stay on the market for about a week. 
Now, across the entire Denver metro area, the average is around 50 days. So you're looking at about six to seven weeks on the market in many cases. And of course, that varies from neighborhood pocket to pocket, city to city. So make sure you check your hyper local statistics. But that's generally what's happening across the entire metro area. So what are buyers doing with this current market? Well, in February, we saw them seek out homes that had been sitting on the market a while only to ask for a significant price reduction from the seller, or more likely they would ask the seller to pay their lender to reduce the rate, uh, their interest rate for the next couple of years, effectively reducing their monthly payment. But most buyers out in the market right now are really just looking for something that is turnkey, a home that is clean, ready to move into without any repairs needed. And those turnkey homes, we're actually starting to see a couple instances of multiple offers on those types of properties again. Homes that are in great shape or in really great, highly desirable neighborhoods will see a couple of buyers submit offers and compete against each other to win that home. So here's what I'm telling all of the home buyers that I'm working with this March. First, do not listen to realtors or other folks on social media who make a blanket statement and say, now is a great time to buy. There's no way to know if it's a great time to buy for you without sitting down with professionals to evaluate your financial situation and your personal goals to determine if it makes sense for you right now. So find some great help and professionals to help you make that decision. Number two, be patient. Yes, inventory is lower. And yes, that means it's a little more difficult to come across the one. But be patient, work with your realtor to really dig deep on what your must-haves are and go all out when you see that home to make a strong but smart offer. Number three, rates are higher right now. As I'm recording this in early March, they've actually jumped to above seven in some cases for certain buyers. So I highly recommend reaching out to multiple lenders, applying to at least two different lenders to see what rates come back out, and talk to those lenders about options in terms of buying down your rate to make it more affordable for a couple of years until you can refinance. And here's another important key. Many of these lenders are offering credits of several thousand dollars to pay for your refinance when the time comes. So refinancing to a lower rate in a couple of years could be free if you ask your lender to pay for it. And to kind of round out what all of this means for buyers, the big benefit to you as a buyer right now is there is a lack of competition. Yes, interest rates are higher. Yes, that means your monthly payment is going to be higher. But if you can handle it and get into the market, you're up against a whole lot less competition, meaning you have more room to negotiate with the seller and get what you want out of the deal. And of course, you can refinance to a lower rate later. Let's move on to sellers. What can you take away from the latest housing numbers in the Denver area? Well, generally speaking, we are still very much in a seller's market. You, in many cases, are in control. Will you get the same price and deal as you could have over the last couple of years? No, the market is no longer as hot as it was in 2021 and 2022. But if you've owned your home since 2019, and in some cases 2020, and of course before, chances are you have a ton of equity in your home and you'll be making a great profit at the end of the day. But it is time to shift expectations. Your home is likely not going to sell in one weekend. In fact, you'll probably have a couple of weekends of letting buyers come in to see your home. And as I mentioned in the previous section, buyers are out there looking for homes that are ready to move into. They don't want to have to do massive projects. So things like stained carpet or ripped drywall, it's probably time to replace those. Get a handyman in there and make sure the home is looking great before anybody walks through the house. And in terms of the bigger systems, ancient furnaces, worn out rooftops, be prepared to, at the bare minimum, provide the buyer a credit to repair that in the long run. And this is probably a good rule of thumb for a seller in any market. Before you list your home, think about the buyer. If you were a buyer walking through your home, what would you want and not want to see? Address accordingly, and you'll have a much better time selling your home fast and for the most money. Now is also a good time for sellers to write contingent offers or telling the seller of the home you want to buy that your purchase is contingent on you actually closing on the sale of your current home. Those kinds of deals were unheard of a year ago. The story of the 2023 real estate market, I think, will be defined in late spring and early summer as interest rates continue to work themselves out. Remember, for every 1% increase in mortgage interest rates, a buyer's borrowing power goes down about 10%. It has a big effect. 
So we'll have to pay close attention to inflation data, upcoming Fed meetings, and of course, the 10-year Treasury yield. But as I record this in early March, some lenders are quoting rates of above 7%, which is extremely high. And it's going to be interesting to see how that rate affects all of that pent up demand. Will buyers still push through thinking that they may refinance later in the year if and when rates drop? If February was any indicator, the market should continue to move along despite interest rates, although it will be slower a lot slower than the last couple of years, certainly. But if rates continue to tick down this month and continue into the fives in the summer, quarter three could be particularly hot with those who simply could not afford a 7% interest rates in these spring and early summer months. Pay close attention to the rates. It'll tell the story through the rest of the year. And remember, there's a solution to the higher rates for you buyers and you sellers still have plenty of power in this market. That's it for this March update. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any specific questions, please reach out. My contact information is in the description.